and then I'm going to put this later on our in our web page in the system so you guys can actually check and you can actually watch again in the on YouTube later I'm going to solve this problem this is the problem 24 from the your textbook and what do we have here let's see let's read this problem okay a wire is, is bent into three circular segments each of radius r equals 10 centimeters as shown in figure in this figure that you have on your screen right there so we have a quarter no not a quarter one eighth of a, a sphere right and if you consider just the planes for example the yz plane you have like a quarter of circle right for each one of these sections here section cb sections ac and sections ab and section ab okay first thing that i'm going to do here guys remember uh, we, we are going to apply faraday's law here to calculate the electric sorry the magnetic field generated here generated on these wires by a magnetic field that is not represented in the figure so we have a magnetic field here that is not represented here but is right here it's saying that we have a magnetic field that points what is that in the x direction you have so that means you have something here right i'm not going to represent everything it's going to be very too much pollution i guess in our but you have something like here right? you have a magnetic field like this pointing in in the y positive direction of the x in x direction so that means that this magnetic field here is something like this is this big you can write this magnetic field as its magnitude times uh, i hat but here comes the problem I, from uh, guys since I clearly I have spherical spherical symmetry for this problem for me when I when I I really like to take advantage of symmetries on when I have these problems I'm, I, I don't use any tricks I just change to the symmetry that the problem has and then I solve it in this case I'm going to uh, following what I just told you I'm going to write this vector here right this i hat i'm going to convert this in spherical coordinates i'm going to use the spherical coordinates for this vector and then i can rewrite this vector as let me see In spherical coordinates then I'm going to have B the vector B is going to be B open here this is going to be sine theta multiplied by cosine phi let me put some lines here I don't know right da -da 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 cosine phi and this is going to be in the radial direction I'm going to put the radial direction in red plus I'm going to leave I'm going to put the the my, my book about uh, vector calculus in the in our web page too so you can check this if you don't remember I don't know if all of you actually had took this course so sometimes people are a little bit from different courses didn't take this so they, they they're not so familiar with this kind of uh, uh, mathematics okay this is cosine theta cosine phi and this is going to be in the theta hat direction let me change the color here Uh, 
simple minus sin phi and this is in the phi hat direction phi hat direction let me okay so now I have my at least one one of the vectors like described here so this is going to be one my equation one and just to remind you guys I put this uh, I found this figure in the internet so it's e I think it's easier to see here so I have the uh, our head direction is something maybe is something like this I'll, I'll try to to make this as much perfect as possible so our direction is this direction so you have theta direction is actually uh, I'm using blue for theta head direction is in this direction here right parallel to the this plane this is theta head direction and we have another one another unit vector that is pointing in the phi head direction something like this maybe man it's so hard to to draw something when it's not in 3d man the plane is kind of hard okay but the 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 phi head direction is something that is like here guys okay these are this that theta had to be something like here and so on so i hope you can understand for for this from this uh, drawing here okay let's write then this element of area here da as you can see the da here is actually it's easy to see that da is actually can be represented by the just the product here right from this piece here to this length by this length so you can actually write this differential the element of area this differential element of area here is r the r square sorry sine theta v theta v phi and clearly if you look at the drawing here the normal vector to this to this element of area clearly is going to be in the unit vector is going to be in the the normal direction here is actually the radial radial direction is actually r hat so if you want to write this infinitesimal element of area as a vector all you have to do here is include is actually include here this r hat so you're going to have the same thing here. No, 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 no. And this I have here R hat. Ah, oh, come on. Why is it racing? So this is my expression too. Well, with that I can actually, I like to do, this is my strategy guys, I always write the magnetic field, right, in a convenient uh, coordinate system, then I do the same for the infinitesimal element of area in, in a very convenient uh, coordinate system then I write the the vector the infinitesimal area the element of uh, infinitesimal area vector also 
and then I calculate this color product this is to actually to avoid any operation mistakes during the process so I go step by step I don't write at once go uh, Faraday's law so I calculate this color product here clearly what you can see here guys is actually look when you perform this color product I'm not going to, to write explicitly all the terms here because the line is too short but just as a reminder I'm going to write here you can see that you are going to have this color product between the R hat right you have R hat R hat then the other one that you are going to have is R hat theta hat this color product between R hat theta hat and then R hat and phi hat so this is theta hat here and I have the other product here for the uh, phi hat so these are the scalar products this one is equals to one right those those vectors here are parallel right look at the drawing here the other vectors are orthogonal they are orthogonal so that means that this one is going to be zero scalar product product between orthogonal vectors is always zero this is going to be zero this is going to be zero as well so the only term that I have to worry is about this term here the first term in expression 1 so this pro this scalar product here is going to give me so this color product here is going to be only those terms here that is uh, B sine theta cosine phi and then uh, these terms here from the DA there is going to be uh, let's write everything already so this is going to be b r squared sine theta cosine phi cosine phi d theta d phi okie dokie okay guys and then I can apply Faraday's law uh, no sorry I'm going to calculate the magnetic flux so my strategy is just like that describe perform uh, perform this color product so the next step here in my strategy is actually to calculate the flux calculate magnetic flux is we know that this since this is a differential we have the differential element of area here so this is going to be uh, one integration we have to integrate to to find all the contributions here 
so we have to integrate this the same way we did there in the previous chapter for the electric field okay you can do this so this is going to be integral so this is going to be a double integral right one for the okay let's put here this is going to be b the magnetic field is constant we can put outside of the integral this radius here is also constant you can put outside the integral the only thing that you have varying here is actually the two angles right the phi and theta angles so we have one integral here for from 0 to pi over 2 for the theta sine the square of theta the theta and this is multiplied by the other integral is going to be from 0 to p pi over 2 also for the d phi wait a second some term is missing here so we have cosine of phi d phi okay now it's more like it uh, so those are very familiar with these integrals right this one is pretty straightforward so this integral here is going to be um, sine sine of uh, phi and this uh, apply to these two limits uh, extreme points here so this is going to be 0 and this is pi over 2 and sine of pi over 2 is 1 and sine of 0 is 0 so this integral here is going to give me f pi over 2 Oh, sorry it's going to give me one so this integral for this okay for this integral here uh, well this is going to give me give me some some trouble a little bit a little bit let's call this integral two integral two is pretty easy so let's call this one integral one and let's solve this integral one separately right here and then come back to this expression here let's call this expression how do you call let's call this three so this integral integral one here is that baby boy there i'm going to use like a trigonometric identity to actually solve this this um, sine square of theta you can rewrite this as actually one half uh, integral from zero to pi over two of one minus cosine of two theta the theta i'm just using like a trig tri trigonometric identity here and this is going to give me I can separate these two integrals here using the properties integral property since they are linear right I can this is going to be one half of, of this integral here p theta minus one half of this integral here pi over 2 cosine of 2 theta p 
theta this is my yeah, second integral leave here and this is going to be pi over 4 and this one here is going to be one um, yeah this is going to going to be uh, it's going to be zero right yeah it's going to be zero for sure Just a second, guys. I just uh, organizing here. Dun, dun, dun. So this from zero to five over two. Yeah, this clearly is going to give zero. So this is sine of pi is zero, and sine of zero is zero too. So this one is zero. So that means we have only this one left right only this contribution here so this is pi over uh, <clears throat> pi over four And the second one is going to be one. Second integral here is integral two. This is going to give me one. minus sine of zero degrees so this is going to be one okie dokie you can substitute this in three again so i have uh, pi over four and one so i can rewrite then my magnetic flux here like uh, this is going to be pi r squared b over 4 Dun -dun -dun. okay seems nice expression let's put this let's call this um uh, this is uh, result 4 this is result I can this is going to be six And 
that's just right here maybe because one of you guys lost I just did 4 and 5 and 3 just to be situated there and I found this expression 6 let's start a new page here we need a new page let's go here let's keep doing let's keep going all I have to do now is actually to apply Gauss law uh, sorry Gauss law Faraday's law so in that expression that I just found so I'm just interested in the magnitude now. I'm going to talk about the the sign for this later. That is actually Lane's law. But first, let's put here the the magnitude of this electro EMF. Right. This is I'm just interested in the magnitude, not interested in this uh, the sign at all. So we know that this is going to be the the uh, time derivative of the magnetic flux. So this is actually uh, Faraday's law. I just have to substitute here the expression that I just calculated. We have the pi is a constant in time. The radius is also con constant. So let's put all these constants outside of the integral. And this is 4 in here but the magnetic flux is actually is changing varies with time and this one um, is given right so this is expression for the induced uh, EMF this one the problem actually we have all this information right the problem is actually saying that this one is 3 3 times 10 to minus 3 teslas so this variation in time for the teslas per second right and you have the radius and everything you can actually just plug in you just you can actually substitute the, the values that the problem gave us and you can find that actually in this case for this for the values that we have for the problem let's go back here for the pre previous page we have here the radius okay and we have the um, the rate of the magnetic field right here three milliteslas per second just have to substitute this here there it is here let's substitute this here you we are going to find that this uh, the emf is uh, approximately 2.4 times 10 to minus 5 volts so this is the i10 a of this problem and the item b is what is the direction the direction of the current in say in, in this uh, segment bc uh well i prepared a better a better drawing for this one because remember what what i told you guys i think this one okay what I told you we have let's go back to the beginning this induced current here is generated by this field that is actually increasing right in this direction uh, this is the rate of uh, change temporal change for this uh, for this magnetic field that means that this field is going to according to Lenz law right since remember what um, Faraday laws says is actually that you're going to generate 
a magnetic field that opposes this field be here in this case if the magnetic opposing this field is going to be a field like the one represented in green here so we have this B in green that is actually pointing in the negative I had direction right it doesn't matter So here I have, I didn't write here, but I have this, the magnitude of this induced field. And this is going to be in the minus I, I had direction. Okay, and then to find the direction of the current, all we have to do is actually use the right hand rule remember you can put the, your thumb in the direction of the of the magnetic field and your fingers pointing uh, align with the wire and then you curl your fingers and you have uh, the direction of the induced current in this case is going to be from C to B in this segment here. If you're looking in this segment here, it's going to be from C to B. What, some comments here, guys. Uh, you can also, and this is uh, the, the end of this problem, but uh, I'm going to just make some comments about this problem before I finish. We have a couple more minutes here. There is another way to solve this problem too, right? You can consider uh, since this magnetic field here look guys another another way to solve this problem what the hell is going on here I didn't solve like this because I don't like much but it's uh, uh, for some people makes uh, calculations like easier let's go back to the first page here in our solution uh, you see since this magnetic field here is on the actually completely in the I had direction the only area that you are you should be interested in is actually represented by this quarter here quarter of a circle here you can also solve like this here if you wanna considering how can I say like a pro projection of this spherical area here in this quarter of circle so that means you could actually uh, let's make another page here maybe it's easier to to show what i mean so this is a alternative way of solving this problem okay let's go back let's erase this here to, 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 to erase okay let's make this bigger all right uh, this is the only area that is actually parallel to the to the magnetic field right so this area here would be this quarter of circle So we, you could easily, you can easily see there's actually this differential area here is going to be uh, this quarter of a circle that is pi over four times r squared. And this is in the, let's change, oh. so we have this area here. If you're considered just a proje projection, right? So, and this is going to be in the I head direction. So you have the elements, these elements of area here, just like this. And again, if you multiply here, if you're considering the just this uh, projection, when you when you do this scalar uh, product here, it's going to be easier. It's less step than the, the way I did, but I again remember I, I really like to to use 
all the the coordinate systems that I learned in university as as much as possible but it's really up to you so let's go let's just finish the, what I just started here you can write like this and this is going to be B uh, sorry pi pi over 4 over 4 r squared b and this is i had scholar scholar two i had this is one and you have exactly the same expression that we have here as you can notice uh see we have exactly the same expression here yeah, equation number four but it's, it's really up to you the way you, you solve this this problem and whatever makes easier for you to understand and and to solve the problems uh that's all i want to say i want to explain to you uh, today i solved another problem i will leave in the on the uh, in the lecture notes guys the other problem the problem 2028 20, too that is a little a little bit more difficult than this one